Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things Lego. Hit the link below to find a store near you. My name is Josh Whedon, and this is our Dungeon Delve display. So we'll start in here. This is Doug Hughes' model here with his lava worm. We've got, um, it's incredible, his lighting is awesome. Yeah, the, uh, the glowing orange at the bottom there and then kind of the multi-tiered area around it just looks fantastic. Absolutely, yeah. He, in my opinion, like he, th this, this is the crowning jewel of the, of the whole thing. It's an awesome, awesome build. How many builders were involved in the whole layout here? Um, roughly 30, a little, a little more than 30, yep, yep. And then going along here, this is, this is one by um, Kaylin Malloy. She's got all these different creatures, and they're, this, is, this is Dungeons & Dragons related, but her characters are playing humans and houses because that's their version of fantasy. <laughs> Just looking for a nice house to settle down in. That's right. Yes, exactly. Yep. And then we have Thanos here who's painting minis. Um, he doesn't play. He just makes his own worlds. <laughs> now, I noticed right off the bat here, you can see, like, uh, obviously Doug's is very large here. You yeah. see some smaller ones. How did this work in kind of fitting these together? So there's a standard. Your, your basic module is a 16 by 16 footprint and then 13 bricks high. And as long as you meet that standard, you can go as big as you want. So Doug's model here is four modules wide and four modules tall. Um, these two are each, like... It's just two modules, two doubles. So as long as you meet the standard, you're, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, then moving down here, we have a bunch of Steve Walkers. He's got all the, I, I haven't even looked at all of these, so a lot of the details I don't know. I know this one lower down here. This is the non-player character's diner where they go to eat when they're not fighting adventurers. <laughs> I was really happy with that one. Um, yeah, he's got a lot of different stuff going on. I love how many feature lights that add some great effects to oh, the, yes. the builds as well. I was super excited about that. Um, and I hadn't done a lot of lighting until we did this, and it, it worked out really well. Um, yeah, they're, they're incredible. And learning how to do lighting, we have like four or five different lighting ways we're lighting stuff in the back. But it all worked out pretty good. Yep. Good afternoon. Um, this is another one of my favorites here. Um, this is Kyle's, and he's lighting this with UV lights from the back that just light up the, that inter interact with the trans green. But it creates such a good effect there when you look at that. It's got the very creepy look and then those brick-built hands coming out. Yes, exactly. That's another one of my favorites. It's pretty incredible. I like this one that features kind of a white waterfall area. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's, that's really good. I really like how they, the different colors of the trans blue, um, how they interact with the white light, it's, it really makes a nice water effect. Some of these on the very bottom down here have a very kind of cavernous feel to yes. them. Yep, they do. And then others look a little more dressed and filled out. Yeah, we, um, we didn't plan where modules were going to go. We just threw them together. Um, but it, it really, it's, having, it, it's nice having a nice mix. So it looks like some of these are the original natural caverns and others have been fixed up by whatever denizens live in them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see here. A great use of the lanterns inside this one with oh, all yes. of the all of the bones. So that this this one's lantern that's actually a piece from brick stuff that it's already wired in. So we were just able to run the wires out to the back, and he's just holding their actual piece. So yeah, a lot of their stuff is really good. And I don't want to ignore the top either because oh, yeah. you've got some yes. interesting details up yes. here. So yeah, we call them terrain toppers, and. Um, they were part of the standard, but we weren't sure if we were going to do them. And then we did some, and it made it look so much more finished. So it, it was a great thing. And basically, we, we built most of these here because we didn't know how many we were going to need. So we all just brought lots of plants and plate and just started building them as, as more stuff showed up. We were a little lazy with the organization and didn't actually just mark down what everyone was bringing. We just played it by ear. You made it work. I think it looks great. Uh, this this eyeball one is oh, crazy yeah. looking. <laughs> That's Steve Walker's. It, it's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, I like I like where there's. It looks like there's big creatures hiding in the background. That does that. Kyle's here. There's some more eyeballs down there. I really like that effect. What is this minifigure packed one here? Um, that one apparently is a speed build. So it's kind of a brick con one. They're doing a, a volcano speed build in their dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> he 
you got to have some fun competition inside here as well. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And we didn't want people to get too worried about, like, a lot of people didn't know what Dungeons & Dragons was or hadn't played. And they're like, we want to build, but we don't understand what goes in here. And we're like, anything can go in there. Don't worry about it. Just throw something together. Yeah. So, yeah. I like yeah. this. This one looks like the two levels kind of tie together here. Yes. Yeah. So that's Sean Edmondson's, and he's got his swinging axe. Um trap there in the bottom and he's reanimating a Frankenstein-like creature. Yeah, yeah, they go really well together. This guy's being swallowed by spiders, yes. not very pleasant there. <laughs> that's So that's actually my son's, and not to correct you, but they're ants. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and it's called Ants in His Pants. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for the correction there. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. Another one of those uh, creatures yeah, that you mentioned the, up above that. The beholders, yep. That's a happy one. Uh, most of the time they're pretty angry, but he's just happy to see people. <laughs> um, yeah. The rubber ducky is like on his throne there in this one or something. Yeah. So, so in Dungeons and Dragons, if you come across something that looks happy, don't touch it. That's what that duck is. You've got dead guys around there. Yeah, you walk in, there's a rubber ducky and skeletons. You just leave. Just a little pro tip. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Then we've got Gandalf and Pippin over here, and then a, a whole well system underneath. It, it's the it's the one that Pippin knocks stuff down in the well, and so this is what he what what he where the Balrog would be is down there somewhere. Yep. That opens into another large one here. Yes. So this one's actually mine, with this this big beholder, and um, off to the off to our right over there is. Their orc with the electric guitar. He's their bard, you know, singing them into battle. Um, and then the, the beholder has all his minions down there fighting some adventurers off to the side. Yep. What were some of the, the pieces you used on the beholder there? Oh, yeah, so I was having trouble getting the tentacles right, and my son suggested, he was just sitting there, and he looks at me, and he goes, Galador. <laughs> So it's really always the answer, I think. Galador is always the answer. And the the Mixel eyes plug in really well into there, make it look like, you know, little eye sockets. And so he's this Galador cursed beholder and it just works. <laughs> yeah, and he's very poseable too. So the, the eyes can look everywhere. Great yeah. use of the kind of, uh, you know, very smooth looking green river there. Thank you. Um, that actually leads into up here as well. So we did not plan for all the sewer slime to be the same color, but it ended up that way. And this, this one here is uh, made by a friend of mine named Pat. And he had them separately. And then we found m mine here would just pour into it. And then we put that one underneath and it was just serendipity. <laughs> In the midst of all that is this beautifully colored kind of jungle yes, belt. Yes, that's a little fairy forest, and he's fighting some kind of weird brain creature, <laughs> <laughs> as one does in a fairy forest. <laughs> what, is, what is this one over here? Okay, so this is also by my friend Pat. That's a dragon's head, and then quite a ways over there is the dragon's body. And so the idea is the dragon's neck is behind somewhere, and he's planning to do the rest of the body, and we'll scatter it throughout. So the dragon's really big, and he's just kind of sinuous going throughout the whole thing. Fantastic. <laughs> the character building here is really nice. Oh, yes. Yep, that's done, done by Ethan. Um, yeah, he's really good, and he wanted traps and trapdoors dropping down into spikes and a, a witch's cauldron and whatnot. So, yeah, nobody's happy in that one. <laughs> Up here on top, this is an owl bear built by Ty Keltner. Um, I thought it turned out per pretty epic, and we have a little dwarf fighting it off with a frying pan. <laughs> and then deeper down, we come to oh, yes, the, the yes. biggest eyes yet, the I think. Eyes. Those are from the, the Target um, Snowman pack. That's also mine. I, I was like, I got to get those eyes in somewhere. I love the way you kind of shaped the, the, the rock walls around it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that one turned out really well. I, I was I was very happy with that. Um, next to the eyes is a an inn full of Sasquatch, and this this was done mostly by our group called Squatch Lug, and so that's that's symbolic of one of our meetings, <laughs> <laughs> where mostly we just sit around, eat and drink, and you know don't do anything productive, <laughs> except come up with these fantastic ideas. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. 
Yep. What's so, on the very bottom here? So then we we have a um, this tunnel is leading into the the big beholder one over here, and so it's full of dead orcs that these adventurers have already dispatched before they got there. There's a large snake they missed above, that um, is probably going to get down, and they're going to have issues with him soon. <laughs> Here we took the when in doubt, add more skeletons that, approach. That is exactly, that's another one of mine. And I was just <laughs> making empty ones. I'm like, what am I going to put in these? And I was like, I have a Ziploc bag of skeletons. So I just dumped them in there. <laughs> and you get the glow beneath them and it creates a great effect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we were, um, we were trying to go figure out a cheap lighting effect so that people didn't have to buy really expensive lighting. And we have strings of Christmas tree lights in the back. And so I put transparent orange underneath and just plugged it into Technic bricks and it glows really well. So, so we want, we want to do that. So there would be a low bar for entry. This next one that caught my eye, actually, I think plays into the, the section up top as well. Yes, and it's it got does. like every castle faction represented almost. It looks like Pr pretty much. Um, my son built that and he wanted th this is, <laughs> this is one of the entrances to the dungeon. And I believe he said there's 131 shields in there. Wow. <laughs> and I, um, I'm a castle guy, so I have bins of shields. And he said he has a few doubles in there, but he, he tried to get every faction. <laughs> I love that. That's incredible. It's always cool to see throwbacks to some of those older, especially the castle themes. There's been so many variations over the years. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. It, that was super fun. Um, below that, this is um, Tony Hafner's. They are playing D&D there. Um, so yeah, that, that was his, his build. He was super excited about it. It lighted up really well. Um, and then below that we have, oh, that, that's a forge. And then we've got some more skeletons down there. That's one I haven't looked at as close. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then next to it, we have the entrance to the cave with the obligatory Monty Python rabbit waiting for everyone to come in. <laughs> <laughs> glowing eyes. That's right. Yep. And then below this, we have one by Ty Keltner. This is an orc eating unikitties, and he's got one in his mouth. <laughs> I just noticed that. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, he did a great job with that. Um, I heard a little girl walk by today looking at it, and she goes, he's a unikitty cannibal. And we were like, he's not, he's not a unikitty, so he's technically not a cannibal. But Close, yes. though. Yeah, but she was very disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> um, below that, we have some ghosts. Um, I, I was happy with how that trans, that trans green, it kind of pops with the lighting. And then below that, we have one by Will Hafner that he has lots of slime creatures. He likes using unusual parts, and there's there's quite a bit in there. Um, let's see. Then going over here, this is um, Jordan Perry. He's got some great motion in there, um, and he's got behind the swinging axe. I think he has a, a gold frog or a yellow frog in there that he's protecting. <laughs> I love the uh, the arm coming out, oh, and then yes. the big the big mouth. You know, this time the yeah. eyes are a little smaller, but the the yes. mouth is there. Exactly. Yeah, I loved that. Um, he was hoping to get it a little longer, so if you got too close, he'd be grabbing at you. <laughs> um, we got uh, some kind of tentacles over here. Oh, yes, I haven't looked at that one. I'm not. It's lit up really well. I really like that. I haven't looked at the details myself. There's just so much; it's hard to see all of it. And then you've got to have Minecraft when you have anything exactly. underground. So that's another one by Ty Keltner. He, he said when he read the standard, he felt like he was building Minecraft, so he did. <laughs> <laughs> um, that one there, I believe, is a police lineup of the adventurers. It's two orcs looking at it, and they're like, well, which of these killed my buddies? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the light going on and off is so perfect yes, there. Exactly, yeah. I, was, I, I really like that one. Then we have a rock band below that. Um, and then below that is a bunch of slime stuff, it looks like. I really like that one. The, they use UV light down there, so it lights up quite a bit differently. Takes advantage of those, those types of uh, Lego pieces that, that kind of glow really nicely in exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. Yep, I was super happy with that. Then we have a, a, some kind of black dragon here. Um, Above that is a bunch of adventures, one showing off his, his magical weapon he found somewhere. <laughs> um, 
These, oh, there's a birthday party up on top, as you would have. Of course, you want to celebrate your birthday underground in a dungeon. Um, got a pinata. Yes. Got pizza. Guys being consumed, maybe. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Um, I believe below that's a magic shop where somebody's selling the magic stuff they found, as you do, because you, you, why would you keep it? <laughs> and then an inn. Um, and then next to that is some of Thomas Stelter's stuff. He decided we needed an atomic reactor. Um, below that is a, a waiting room for the from the Portland airport with custom printed floor tiles that are the the <laughs> carpet at the Portland airport. Iconic. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yep. Then he's got various monsters and an underwater scene and whatnot. I'm not sure what the shark is swimming through in the pink, but it, it's it's doing it. <laughs> So that brings us to the end, and um, then, then we, we had a sign printed up with everyone who was involved, and um, yeah, I think it turned out, I was very happy with how it turned out. Yep. Yes. This is so much fun. I mean, not only are these builds done really well, but it's just like so creative, and the variety you've got here all kind of in the same general theme, obviously, but it's really neat to see the different directions people went in. Thank you very much. It, it was truly a pleasure, and I was very happy to be able to coordinate it. Yeah. So what, what was that coordination sort of collaboration process like with, with people and as then as they brought those to the show, kind of making sure you could get this all set sure. up? So we did most of our planning on Discord and share, shared our PDF document of the standard there. And then just as people right. came, I just started plugging them in as they came. If they were all here at once, it probably would have been easier, but that's never going to happen. So we didn't even know how long it was going to be. So... Yeah, it was pretty easy just plugging them in, and then we stuck all the lights in from the back and powered everything up. So it was a pretty painless process. I, it was way easier than I expected it to be. <laughs> I know this just kind of exploded here at BrickCon this year. Do you hope yes. to expand on this at other shows or uh, in yes. the future if people are interested? So we're going to bring this to Emerald City Comic Con, whoever is there, and then it'll probably be at Bricks Cascade, and we're going to do one more year at BrickCon. Okay. Um, we've done a lot of... But most of us have been involved in a lot of collabs, and if you go more than three years, it gets a little stale. People are tired of seeing it, so we don't we don't want to wear out our welcome. But we people are going to be able to join next year, so yeah. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for you taking bet. us through all this fantastic work. Shout out to to you and all the rest of the builders who worked so hard on this. Thank you so much. Thank you.